the key components and like the idea that I had like like a year ago that yeah, I will allow to take a junior developer and help him to become a middle developer with the AI help. And that being not so true that that's a kind of like a is an old joke that like hey if you drink coffee you will just do stupid things much faster. So this is what we join this in because you need to understand the architecture. We've seen there are developers, there are good developers, and then there are great developers. These are like really amazing engineering minds who are so great. So with AI, they can make much stronger, much robust software. What's the demand in staff augmentation? What are the companies saying that? What are they looking for right now? This is quite interesting question. Do you think about no code or low code technologies? You know, how they are coming up? Should the startups go there or something like that? Or enterprises should go there? I love this question. In terms of the plane, I, I think I, I would disagree because it's actually much simpler to fly F-35, for example, the 5 gen, uh, versus like F-14 or some older stuff. So this is like much simpler flying experience. First of all, welcome, Vadim. I think we're going to talk about AI a lot in this one. And we're going to talk about AI implementation that you're doing. We're going to speak about you, but you know, the most important thing for me right now is if we can touch a bit of base on Difco, you know, you're, you're running an amazing organization. It sits in Silicon Valley and you guys are doing some really, really good work on your website. You know, there are some really good products that you have developed and really nice engineering there. So before we move forward, before we go deep down, it's, it would be really great if you let us know about Difco. Difco is a company um, almost 16 years ago. So this month is actually our, our birthday month. Initially, we started as a web development because like 2008, um, we didn't have much <laughs> beside the web uh, back then. And uh, now we are doing a lot of things in terms of uh, profit augmentation, uh, team augmentation uh, type of products, uh, also developing complex type of products for different mid-sized enterprises, drop stage startups, typically large scale products, like uh, tens of thousands of hours. But also we love to work with the startups uh, that uh, in early stage, uh, typically uh, second time founders um, that like well funded and just want to have a, like a fast growth. So this is uh, also a thing that we just love to do. Uh, and uh, yeah, so a lot of things in AI, obviously. Um, like it's, I think it will be almost uh, weird not to do AI in 2024. And I think it's uh, an interesting approach will be. But in our case, uh, we started uh, doing AI specifically uh, almost uh, seven years ago, we started in the computer vision. Again, back then it was computer vision, machine learning mostly, like classical approaches. And it was uh, quite a successful journey. Obviously, a couple of years ago with a uh, large rise of LMs, we switched to adding more value in the diffusion models on uh, transformers, etc. But yeah, so this is a kind of like a quick overview of the company. Amazing. So in, in Difco, do you take projects or product development from United States or Maybe other areas as well. We do not have a, like a limited geography in this case. Like, mm -hmm. oh, this is mostly dict dictated by type of like project and client, I would say. So we have uh, currently, I think, around like 20 countries that we work with. And uh, like specifically, most of the client is still United States. Most of the client is still probably California. <laughs> so, and uh, I mean, it's kind of like obvious in this case, but... Still, yeah. So we have uh, uh, many clients in Europe, uh, in um, UK, uh, and uh, we worked a few times successfully with um, Australia and New Zealand. Uh, sometimes a little bit more challenging with the time zones, obviously. In UK, it's probably much simpler. It's a little bit closer. In our case, it's just like completely, completely opposite part of the globe. Geography is, doesn't really specifically concern us. The most important thing is uh, specifically in terms of uh, the project type, et cetera. Again, obviously, excluding any kind of like uh, government restrictions, et cetera. But uh, in general, it's uh, what we focus mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Amazing. I think we have lots of similarity that way because we, as a company, we work in the same sense. You know, there's no geographical boundary. And so there's lots of similarity there. So we're going to discuss AI. Uh, IT services especially is going through lots of change. And there are lots of challenges, as you know, with the current world market, how things are going on. And 
with these challenges you know a bigger challenge came which is you know artificial intelligence for companies like us so we're going to particularly discuss you know how you are moving into it if if there are other companies who are in it services get to know what difco is doing and how are you moving into this you know what are the trends you know how your company is currently utilizing ai for softwares what are the kind of things you are building it would be great to touch upon that i think we can call different waves in a cycle even like a micro waves in a larger mm-hmm. cycles etc so and like because like when now like people asking about ai i'm always like concerned about like are you asking about like last couple of years or are you asking about like last 10 years because it's completely different in certain sense, it's kind of the same, but just opportunity to become much, much larger. But just to kind of like break what we do and how we do this specifically in terms of uh, uh, pushing things in the right direction. Uh, let's talk about last couple of years. Yeah, When originally ChatGPT3 was released, I was like thinking like, wow, we will be able to replace develop. Oh, still like- thinking that. They're still thinking. Uh, QA engineers, like, oh, <clears throat> yeah, wherever. Yeah, so it's uh, like, even like writers, like, yeah, I will have agent that will do everything. And up we was kind of a little bit wrong and was like uh, looking into new shiny tool and thinking like, yeah, now it will do everything that we want. And up it being like not so true in such way. I think wonderful examples that was like replacing part of workforce, etc. And folks that like reduced like headhounds, but by hundreds of people utilizing it. But in the same term, I just want to say that not every company in this way was able to do this. And I don't think it's applicable to everything. So speaking about developers, I think the key here that it's a great helper. It's still not in a sense that you can write everything. And it's still in a sense that you cannot have this as a another human being doing the work for you. And I don't think we here yet, and I don't think we will have the same experience at least this year. I have no idea what will happen next year. Like I'm tired of making a prediction and being wrong about this all the time because it's moving so, so fast. But in the same term, I see that we have the opportunity that it will change a lot of things, how the development done today. And I think the key component and like the idea that I had like, yeah, like a year ago, that yeah, I will allow to take a junior developer, developer and, and help him to become a middle developer with the AI help. And that being not so true that it's a kind of like a is an old joke that like, yeah, if you drink coffee, you will just do stupid things much faster. So this is what we drain the scene because you need to understand the architecture. And the most things that we see that most successful when a successful architect level or like a place senior guy understand what is going on and taking GitHub Copilot or other tools to help them move forward. I think this is the way that it's currently working in the right way. Again, it cannot replace yet the developer, but I think it can reduce the workload. And what we have today is roughly like 30 sometimes 40% depending on a project type and a lot of details that will apply. Yeah, I, I think in that sense, I don't know. Um, my thought process is quite different. The companies may think that they can have a junior developer and they can use AI tools and make them work really good. I think completely different. I think if, even if it has to go there, it shouldn't. But at the same time, it has to be senior developers who should be taking charge of it because... You and me, we both have seen, we have worked on almost similar number of years. You know, we started in 2009. We've seen there are developers, there are good developers, and then there are great developers. These are like really amazing engineering minds who are so great. So with AI, they can make much stronger, much robust software. So I think think it's completely different if it has to go that way. It has to be like senior developers taking charge over things. It's like you fly a fighter plane but then there is generation three generation four generation five generation six six generation is by the most experienced pilots they understand so many things so 
I feel it that way. It's, it's so fun that you mentioned this because in terms of the plane, I, I think I, I would disagree because it's actually much simpler to fly um, uh, F-35, for example, uh, the 5 gen uh, uh, versus like F-14 or some older um, uh, stuff. Um, um, so this is like much simpler flying experience. I think it's just even simpler than many uh, small planes uh, because it's actually doing a lot of things for you. Uh, but, um, and it doesn't allow you to screw up so badly as uh, manual kind of controlled uh, environments. But I think <clears throat> in this regard, I, I do agree on like 100%. And this is what I was saying for the last couple of years. If you take a senior talent and you apply the right tools to this talent, you just give in the right uh, tools there uh, that like allowing them to get, dig faster and they can find the gold mine much faster. Um, so this is, I think, the, the key component because I don't think it's a, the question of like replacement, um, but I think it's a question of enhancement. And you can take uh, a good developer and make them a great developer. I'm not saying that you can take a... A uh, person that doesn't understand and uh, make them understand uh, again, they still need to learn. And like, I, I think I, I will be proven wrong in, in a year or so. And uh, we'll have people like building products that, like, we they just building from like a, a PRD to actual like product uh, really, really fast. But I don't think this. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, will apply to everything, and I think it will apply to uh, specific things. Even today, if you want to like build a simple, let's say, a e-commerce website, you cannot do this in a right way with the eye and the level of customization of like average mid-sized enterprise requirements. Like you cannot. You you need a human beings to do this, and to be exactly direct, this is quite simple task. Again, it may have like a lot of bears and whistles here and there, but it's not like a, right. a launch in a space shuttle. It's really defined project. Still, um, yeah, I cannot do this fully. It can help, but still it cannot do everything. Yeah, absolutely right. My analogy there was that when you have bigger investment to make, like the latest, you know, F series planes would be quite costly. So you'll give it to your senior senior pilots, and at the same time, uh, you understand that they can fly them much better, and in war they can use it much better because of the experience they have. So the same analogy goes into when there is a product development. Uh, you want to, you know, there are some serious investors who are coming up. And there are some serious startups who are coming up and want to invest really great amounts into building the backbone of their business, which is technology. That's what all of us are doing. And they want to give it to exceptional uh, developers, you know, the right tools. Um, for us in, in IT services, we want to make great, you know, we want to make good developers, really great developers. So the seniors would come in, they would understand everything and then they'll teach um teach their juniors and you know they can move forward and build some really amazing things uh speaking of which you know uh, what kind of changes you have seen in the last two years you know let's not go back to 10 years because clients were not looking to get ai into their products but in the last two years you know what kind of products are you developing you know where you are using ai you know and what kind of tools like chat gpt is used most or uh, machine learning or what else are you doing? What kind of changes you have seen? So I think this depends on a level of implication of the task. So um, again, machine learning doesn't go anywhere. Uh, so it's, we, we didn't lose the machine learning part. Uh, it still exists. So it's, uh, it's just different type of tools. If you need to analyze a bunch of data uh, uh, in a consistent basis, and if you have, let's say, uh, a terabyte worth of data per day that you need to analyze where uh, um, you need to see patterns, you need to do some predictions or like even like real-time tracking uh, 
um, all the patterns, etc. Like, hey, it's like it's it's not a work for ChatGPT or in any of this large language model. They too slow. It's like it's impossible type of task, and it's many implications in in just in industrial uh, machinery, for example, like predictive type of maintenance or <clears throat> uh, safety systems, uh, where a lot of systems will use machine learning, but they will not use uh, any kind of like LMs. It's like, no, it's like, it doesn't really work <laughs> that way um, where you need to analyze um, uh, such large volumes of the data and you cannot put this into the prompts <laughs> uh, or anything like this. But uh, what you can do uh, and like what, what are we using? <clears throat> uh, like, I think the, the right answer to this, we're using everything that is available and we're always testing because um the like hard truth is it's a not a best tool uh, that you can use for something i think this is a realm of uh, um making a decision if you want to go uh, on a commercial scale to open ai to anthropic to <clears throat> uh, gemini um for solutions and you want to trust them or you want to go to open source mm -hmm. and this is a simple question that you want to ask, because by end of the day, if you find this open source and you can use Llama and other open source models um, to do stuff that you need to, I mean, you have this like 10 times cheaper and sometimes maybe even more and probably in next half a year, even more cheaper than like OpenAI, et etc. Right. And, uh, Again, if this is solving your specific type of issue, if you can solve this, great, like amazing. So it's it's working. <laughs> the uh, second kind of example that I just want to bring there, I think it's a, in a if you uh, want to trust uh, OpenAI as a company and think that they will bring value in new versions, et cetera. Because like, again, Sam Alman told like, couple of months ago, like, just trust us. We'll build everything for you. You will be fine. Just continue pay us. Like, again, I'm not buying this. And I know in many, many cases, Anthropic will be better. In many, many cases, uh, Gemini will be better. But again, everything will depend on a tool. And my answer today will be irrelevant in, in a couple of months. Because again, maybe OpenAI will launch something else. And uh, maybe Google will launch something, else, et cetera. Again, at this point, I cannot make bets, but what I can say for sure that in a in this market that we currently have, I think we'll have uh, the point where they cannot overcompete over algorithms. And this is, I think, already kind of like happening because we in a plateau kind of performance for many of these models. And um, we may again put another 10 billion, another 100 billions into this, et cetera. Uh, but I think we'll have kind of similar type of growth. And the main question will be, I mean, on the, sorry, on general purpose models, like again, not for specific specific type of models. Yeah, we, we can use it, other type of models. They can perform better in some use cases. But general type of models, I think they will be much better done by a uh, big three or four uh, uh, companies. And they will perform um, relatively similar. Uh, and I think this will be a taste question is same as like I using Windows or Mac or Android and uh, iOS, etc. So you will have the same kind of uh, answer. At least for now, this is seems like what it will uh, actually how it will uh, actually will happen. But uh, we'll see uh, quite soon. So, so you think that you know we are moving towards open AI operating systems. I think we move into like again, depending on the type of task. If you trying to write texts uh, for your marketing, I mean, 
you can use wherever and spend like 20 bucks per user. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. So it doesn't really change that much. Um, <clears throat> and we're using, for example, we're using Anthropic, we're using uh, OpenAI, and we're using Gemini, Gemini actively, uh, like across the field for a lot of our uh, team members. But in the same term, when we're building products, um, this is the question of like, uh, can we solve this with open source? Uh, if we have custom models that we need to build, if we have custom training that we need to do, in this case, yeah, we will go into open source most likely. Um, and <clears throat> the another question is, do we have a data that we need to protect that will be unique to us? So will we have the examples where we definitely don't want to share with uh, uh, OpenAI. And I think this is the main uh, issue that we see today, that a lot of our clients have a type of data that is basically becoming a new gold and they don't want to give it to OpenAI because yeah, they say like, hey, we will not mm. use it for training. No one actually trusts in this, at least mm. for now. Um, and uh, no one cares about if they can sign these things, et cetera, on the right legal way, they still do not trust them. And uh, I think by end of the day, um, in a matter of like a couple of um, years, the company's data will be the main um, resource that they have. And this would be unique to them. Because again, <clears throat> think about amount of the data that not in a public internet that actually laid down in a corporations. Like for example, GP Morgan have petabytes of data <clears throat> sitting around their data centers about their customer data, about their customer experience and, and like a bunch of other things that relates to them, that unique to them. And, uh, they don't want to give it away to OpenAI or to Google, to anyone. They want to do it themselves using open source. And I think this is a right move because, again, uh, this data is actually represent more data that, in some cases, open internet can provide. Yeah. That's a pretty interesting use case because medium to large corporations may feel that their data is highly, highly important and they don't want to give it to OpenAI or Gemini or anyone else. Uh, they don't want to give it to Google or OpenAI or Microsoft, you know, at the back and maybe Meta or some other players that would come up. And that means that we are going towards how programming came up. You know, it was Microsoft-based languages at first and then PHP came up and then which is like, open source and other open source technologies came up because companies thought that when we were, we're not going to put, we're not going to give much of our intelligence to these companies, which might be competitive companies to them. So, you know, you run staff augmentation as well. So what do you think? What, what's the, what are the most important things that you're getting in AI? You know, what kind of business is coming up? What kind of, what does company need right now? You know, in AI, is it mostly about open AI developers or you know, people who have experience in that or maybe with Llama as well? I mean, in a lot of cases, so I would divide this again in the two realms. So one will be in a, um, hey, we want, like we, we have to ask from a lot of enterprises, hey, one developers that know how to use uh, different AI helper tools. So like copilot and whatsoever in a specific type of markets. Um, and I think in a lot of case, even for like a typical developer position, I'm not talking about AI position, they want to have developers that know specifically how to do uh, simple uh, type of like uh, integrations uh, with these platforms, et cetera. And this is kind of like a standard ask that we see a lot. Um, again, um, one piece of the puzzle. The second, I think this is <clears throat> for companies that are trying to build more custom approaches. Because again, one story is to write faster with AI 
And I think this is not really the most crucial part. I think the most interesting part, how we can actually take different models and can apply them to specific companies. Because in some cases, we will have clients that will say like, hey, let's take uh, our data and let's, let's make uh, a good uh, customer chat product, for example, yeah? And in a lot of cases, uh, it's a product that exists for this already, unless again, they wanna develop this. And we can help them to guide this through the process and using some existing tools to already build this. But in some cases, they want to have more custom things. They want to have not just like a support level one or replacement. They want to have more enhanced experience. And in this case, using different models and different agents is really, really helpful. Um, again, I don't have the right answer in terms of like which model to use because this will depend on a use case. And uh, the important thing, it will change. Like uh, we developed... Um, bunch of computer vision products let's mm -hmm. say six years ago and uh, <clears throat> we did the, the most product that's still alive we did updates every i think two years and now like we're doing updates like every like year every half a year we're changing things and we're adding things etc because we can make uh processing cheaper we can make it faster we can add more value and um, in a lot of cases, it's not the question of like which model to use, which model is performing better today. Um, because um, <clears throat> I think it's a, the same as like which advertisement channels to use. Um, currently, we will use Google, we'll use Facebook, for example. But tomorrow comes down TikTok and like, hey, like we'll do it twice cheaper and we'll provide twice as more value for some use cases, obviously, but everyone less like, hey, like we don't need meta expensive ads or like LinkedIn expensive ads. We'll go to TikTok and this will solve all our problems but for now. Uh, and again, like in a half a year, like Facebook come along and is like, yeah, you know, let's make it the same type of offer, but better. And again, the kind of a cold war of the uh, AI models continues. And I think uh, we'll have a tremendous uh, success with uh, this competition. And I really like that we have this competition. And I think key to success in this market is actually to have this competition. Like right. no regulations, just pure competition. Because again, we want, by end of the day, as a society, we want cheaper product that will perform better. We don't want to iOS iPhone that doesn't really change for last, I don't know how many years, but it doesn't really change in for last six years. Yeah, like, six again, years. Maybe you, after you, ten. You, you, you have like three cameras now. Now we have five cameras. Like, who cares? Like, I, I, I want to like uh, make phone calls. Like, okay, read emails probably. But still, again, like, I don't really care how many cameras it have, right? Come on, it doesn't really change anything. Um, so I think we'll have the same play um, uh, with AI models. But what is, what's the demand in staff augmentation? What what are your what are the companies saying that you know um, what did what are they looking for right now? So this is quite an interesting question. I think um, like last couple of weeks we. Last week, we had a Fed report about reduce of uh, uh, job opening for software development. Um, I don't know if you saw it. Um, but the reasoning behind this is mostly like uh, layoffs in a, uh, big companies and other folks, et cetera. And like, uh, kind of like um, all this story about like uh, um, interest high rates, et cetera. Um, this is... Uh, one piece of the puzzle, uh, it's not like, hey, AI is replacing developers, but the hikes that we had uh, in 2020, 2021, um, uh, with the software development uh, market growth, et cetera, this is just like coming uh, and cooling down. Um, so I think this is what we have in the market. And um, 
and um, staff augmentation, um, again, this will depend on the company, obviously, but we see more folks looking for full stack uh, architects that can do the job right. And um, we've seen um, that people want to have more professional developers um, versus having more developers. Um, but in the same terms, again, different companies, different playbooks. Um, um, the market is flooded with developers and it's a lot of competition and uh, it's much faster to hire for sure. Like two years ago, it was so pain in a, uh, everything to make a hiring, as you know, and now it is much faster approach, but again, it's adding to competition. And I like this because in end of the day, any kind of like cheaper uh, solution um, that uh, doesn't really deliver a quality um, will go away uh, for certain type of experiences. Again, when we have, um, because again, the cheaper quality uh, and quality is doesn't really kind of lined up. Again, you will have a reduction in some cases, but you will not have a uh, like amazing performance for cheaper pricing. Um, I think the key here is to have um, right people um, that can stay with the company and deliver results. And uh, I think this is the key success uh, for them uh, because by end of the day, this is service that allowing them um, to make a faster moves here and there. And uh, for companies that can provide this, I think this uh, will succeed. Doesn't matter how AI game will play out. Uh, so this is, I think, the, uh, the key success uh, play for the, um, for augmentation models and for team augmentation models. Yeah, so those were the bubble times, 2021, 2022. We saw, we saw the market you know, it, it was it was quite crazy at that time. The market, you know, we couldn't understand where it was going. There were so many orders that were coming up. Companies were trying to fill in things. And that was largely because of COVID. Because in COVID, investors had all the money and they didn't know where to put it. So they thought that technology is the one which is still moving the world while the world is shut down. So they wanted to invest more and more into the technologies at that time. And every other company... Yeah, they distributed too much money. Yeah. And this is what caused a lot of problems, like a yeah. lot of overfunded startups that lead to nowhere. And yeah. now we have like this is uh, this healthy check uh, happening. And a lot of this stop or stop startups is closing down. And I think this is a, actually a good thing for the market. So we have much more healthy ecosystem. Yeah, the problem is what's left behind. It's the engineers who came at that time who were like coming into the market at that time and they were on like really high costs uh, which the companies could not sustain anymore. And uh, that's the problem I feel that time caused. And these engineers think that maybe that those are the right times and now are the bad times. But uh, we need to tell them that this is how the software market used to uh, function even before you know those times i agree i think this is again still healthy and uh i don't think we'll have a lot of developers uh going into working in mcdonald's kind of thing we definitely saw a lot of crypto bros going to uh to this type of work and i think again this is healthy this is again <clears throat> When people think that it's easy way of getting into high paying salaries and uh, uh, like uh, uh, being six fives with the blue eyes, etc., uh, I don't think this is the like real truth. With uh, uh, it, it is not that you can get success quickly and you can get this get away with this uh, for a long time. So I think this is the exceptions. Yeah, I, I think, you know, we came into this world because we came into technology world because we really wanted to change the world. We really wanted to bring some greatness. You know, we we saw how technology was moving, how uh, 
people in the silicon valley and other areas were like really coming up with amazing products you know uh, iphone came up and all this applications came up and how people were using things we wanted to bring some great to their lives and that was the core thing that we came up with and yeah i mean somehow in 2021 2022 that changed because uh, pe- the culture around it went to like okay you know keep on improvising and you know keep on getting a lot of money while the companies were only growing at 15% they were giving 50% hikes hey, that caused problems but it always had to come back it was a bubble uh, if i have to ask you vadim uh, if you can give a consultation on ai uh, coming back to it so if it's a startup you know you take some startups which are like second time founders as well and it's an e-commerce platform where uh, a company is coming up and selling up you know lots of products for men uh, what kind of tool set do you think would be really good for you know and this company is looking to particularly get the help of ai Uh, into their product what do you think should be the tool set oh, we should go with open source or open ai because this company is a startup they can build on the models that there are already there what would be you know maybe reasonable or affordable for them i think if you're a startup and you if you just starting out and if you don't have the capabilities and a budget for uh, like building your own stuff um I don't think you should go into open source and trying to build stuff if you don't have expertise. I think this this is what create kind of a problems with this. And with a startup you need to have a fast things. You need to have a tools that you can just take and use it tomorrow or like right. even today. And I think you should go and like try to use uh, main tools. And again like if it's a marketplace as one playbook if it's a uh e-commerce shop um you probably just building this using shopify shopify plus kind of type of products um <clears throat> because again you want a fast to customer uh, experience that they provide um and if you build in those just take uh, other tools that already exist um do not try to build something that again will take you a couple of months to build spend hundreds of thousands of dollars and end up like hey it doesn't really do any good the same as like a read to use product and i think the key to success in this type of experiences is actually to have this um uh, ability to test things um and i mean specifically like talking to your star founders and talking to uh, uh people that build on um, things in the right way i think the key successes um comes down to executive presence in terms of like ability to test and understand these things and not just like outsourcing this to like someone uh, that will figure out this for them mm-hmm. um again you can have talent building this but in a lot of cases you can take now um any of these ai products integrated yourself or with a simple help um uh, of uh some uh developer and like start using this and push the boundaries on this because again in a lot of cases people that will integrate can integrate these things and in developer level will not have a full understanding how to apply the tool and <clears throat> like this is like weird but this is where i say hey do just do not rely if you're in a startup example yeah and you don't have like a budget to spare i mean at least you should not yeah um you should try to go and test things yourself you should try to be um this experimenter that will go and uh take open ai take gemini text to take a uh publicly available courses on any of these things etc um <clears throat> and try to build things in the right way and i think this is where the amazing customer experience comes from where founders can understand how tools is actually working not like having like hey yeah i'm prompting chat gpt to do x y and z but the uh our developers trying to do something developers do not understand the business 
on the same level as our CTO or absolutely uh, yeah. any like our founder led uh, experience would be different. Absolutely. Yeah. What do you think about no code or low code technologies? You know, how they are coming up? Should the startups go there or something like that? Or enterprises should go there? You know, I love this question. Uh, it's a, I was saying for last couple of years to a lot of startups, please don't come to a custom development firms asking to build MVPs when you did not first try to build a product using no code, low code products. Just don't. If you need expertise, figure out in the product how to build a right fit on the product side, sure, please go to us or some other folks uh, that can do this and help you with like guidance, what to build. But in the same terms, try to build a product on a, um, this no-code platforms yourself using AI no-code or like a, a standalone no-code platforms, etc. Because this is where you will be able to test things and yeah, maybe it's not perfect. Maybe it's uh, utilizing like uh, 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 Airtable, Zapper, plus uh, Google Docs, plus wherever, plus another five tools, et cetera. Who cares? If it's working, if it's uh, earning you money, if it's proving the concept right, the MVP is working. Okay, great. You probably don't want to build a hundred million billion uh, dollar business based on this sure yeah. but come on like to test this and to go maybe until even like a couple of million in revenue um and then build a custom development uh for your product i think this is what makes total sense because when startups come into uh developers and asking them to build uh and like uh on a custom approach, just using regular type of frameworks, regular type of language. Like, why? Why, why? why would you do this? Because it will take you much longer time. It will be expensive. Any changes that you need to make will be crazy expensive. Uh, versus, again, if you're building this on a, uh, the platforms uh, of is no code, uh, kind of low code approach, this is where you can uh, test a lot of things and test them like faster. Like for example, um, like we used a AppMaster IO as an example. I mean, they even like provide you with a source code that you can use after if you want hmm. in certain cases. Like, and I think this is great. And like a lot of these things could be like PCI compliant even. Like, I, well, why not? Like why you would try to build this again, unless it's a um, tool that, I don't know, have a much stricter security requirements or uh, if it's like a financial tool, et cetera. But like, uh, for example, I saw a couple of financial product built with no code that compliant and pass security compliances. Just using again, no code, I'll like, okay, a little bit, coding there but like still uh they build a full functional product in like 150 hours which would compare to probably 5000 at least hours on a custom uh, development side like and again they build it they raised money they test the things and again they come back and build in a custom product that they need but again not as a, as a first launch and this is, I think, what defined a much more uh, thoughtful um, uh, startup founder. Again, it's an exception to the rules, obviously, but still. Right. Do you think that they should care about their data as well? I mean, these platforms having the data. I mean, startups and data, yeah. like... Especially fintech, as you mentioned, fintech. <clears throat> I mean, if they comply, you fine in, in general. Like, again, make your own judgment, make your own legal decisions. This is not legal advice. But, I mean, you will need to trust your data 
to someone and um if they have the compliances that you need and you can verify everything that you want to verify with them and there's a bunch of platforms that is actually much more um successful so to say and much more um uh compliant so like why not I again it in a startup, you don't really care that much about this because, like, let's be honest, really small number of startups will be actually compliant in the first year. The, this is kind of an illusion that what will they will have. Um, and actually, more complicated compliances will require much more uh, budget. Uh, and uh, much more um, uh, complicated type of approaches uh, in terms of building this. And you can uh, become like fully certified PCI level one compliant when you have like two person team. I mean, this would be a disaster uh, probably to do this. Uh, again, the main question is like how to make it work uh, in this case and how to make it <clears throat> more uh, efficient and i don't think the data is the question because at the startup level you don't really um care about this uh so deeply um and i don't think you should actually care <clears throat> um crazy about security when you're just starting out because like you will not be able to do great products if you push all these limitations to you you need to think about security. You need to understand this, but it doesn't mean that you need to have a uh, SOC tool type two uh, certification from day one. This is like no no one will be able to do this. This will take you forever, and competitors will definitely not go this route, etc. Again, in certain regulations, yeah, if you're dealing with a healthcare data, please have keeper. Please do not ignore this. All these kind of things. Uh, <clears throat> again, if you can uh, uh, trust your data to big providers, uh, I think you, you should and just build the faster products versus, again, not building the product at all and dying because you don't have money. Yeah, or because you're taking too much time while other competitors are moving up fast. Yeah, because they will use no code, low code products and they will build fast. Yeah. And like not one, probably 20 of them in the same time. Right. So most of the startups should go on and build in low code or no code platforms. And when they have a product ready, they should come to companies like us and yeah, get, get it custom developed. Great. Uh, I'm hearing a lot that SaaS is dead. What are your thoughts about it? Is it is it just SaaS based softwares? You know, is it just because the world is in not such a good economical health right now that people are feeling maybe you know let us move some SaaS companies, you know, let us move some SaaS products out and you know just use less SaaS products. And at the same time, do you think that low code or no code, uh, with the capability of that, many companies are able to make their own products, which they were using you know SaaS products earlier like you know hrm for an example i think it's a fancy um slogan that doesn't really apply to the market as a whole i think the pricing model for SaaS will change this is like 100 percent true um but i think again we don't have a SaaS dead at least not for now and uh, we're not at the point that we can build our own software um uh, to do stuff. So I think you need to be um, really understanding the market if you want to build um, your own software to do things versus like focusing on a business. Because again, if the software that I'm buying from someone else is the key component of my business, I maybe want to have this as a mm. Um, is this my own product? But again, I need to understand that if I buy the software from wherever SaaS vendor, um, 
they will enhance this, they will make it better, etc. Um, and it's not a one-time investment that I make. And I think also it's a destruction because <clears throat> let's say we have a HubSpot as a CRM and let's say we pay them like let's say three, five thousand dollars per month kind of thing. Yeah. So let's say our month uh, yearly bill, even even sixty thousand dollars, etc. Which is quite realistic in a lot of uh, companies. Um, should you build a custom CRM for sixty grand a year? Probably not. Right. It doesn't really doesn't really help you that much. Again, in some cases, uh <clears throat> it's a question is uh how you can reduce pricing, how you can optimize this, etc. <clears throat> Maybe. But again, does it really worse your um does it really worse your time as a company? Because if your business is uh, I don't know, selling tractors or whatever, why you would try to build your own CRM? It sounds like it doesn't really need to go this direction. Um, and you rather like focusing on things that you do better. And again, it's a business question. Uh, do you want to waste time with this? Because um, I think in a lot of cases, when people trying to build um, a lot of custom ERP products, they do not understand the full cost of this because they come into software development shop uh, and they're asking how much it will cost. And let's say they get in a quote for half a mil. That's great. Like half a mil, we pay to whatever provider <clears throat> uh, 300K per year that we will spend half a million today and we'll not need to pay. One. You will need to update, you will need to support, and you'll need to do a lot. And probably the functionality that you get in for this half a meal is not even close to what the uh, big providers is offering to you. Again, it's exceptions to the rules. It's some uh, legacy products that will have um, like not updated in like 10 years and terrible and you cannot like get anything done with this, et cetera. This is a, like multiple exception than this exist. But still, we see a lot of uh, cases where people trying to like, hey, we want to build a custom SaaS product uh, for ourselves and we want to sell it to uh, someone else. It's like the main question that I'm asking, like, are you sure you want to go this direction? Because the main reason uh, that it looks like it's, Simple approach to buy, uh, sorry, to build a custom product. Uh, it's not simple. It's a lot of things that need to happen and you need to have a right team. First of all, to do a good software product, even for internal use. But um, a lot of uh, examples that we see is uh, where customers is not uh perform that well, um, especially when they try to go in a SaaS uh, example, because if they try to go this route, this is a completely different business. And most of them have illusions that this will uh, have a wonderful implications on uh, making this as a, like simpler as they can. And just like adding a Stripe subscriptions uh, on a backend and every cell will work. No, it will not. You will need to do a little different business. Yeah, operations and marketing are like completely different game than, you know, building tech. And many founders yeah. have to understand that. Vadim, uh, I did not even know it has been an hour since we are speaking. So <laughs> one last wonderful question. Wonderful conversation. Yeah, wonderful conversation. One last question before we move, you know, uh, to the end of the podcast what kind of mistakes maybe you have done when you were building ai so that you know many companies like us can learn out of it uh, is there a case study which you have maybe you know where some mistakes were done how do you rectify them so that we also look at that oh it's a good one that's uh so thanks for this question so i think the mistakes is uh not trying different tools 
and sticking to one model or sticking to one approach and um, not seeing outside of this. Because, um, like, especially like, and believing that uh, <clears throat> the current approach is the key, et cetera, um, versus trying other uh, approaches. Because what we see that, uh, and like, I'm like not getting tired of like repeating this over and over again. We don't have a luxury of choosing one product in AI right now and sticking to this uh, for everything because it will have a different performances in different cases and in different uh, uh, comparison with uh, other tools. And again, simple way going with OpenAI for everything um, probably will solve your tasks, but it will not give you the best performance. It will not give you a best cost per mm -hmm. request, etc. cetera. Um, and I think trying new things and uh, constantly seeing that um, things involve and like really diving into tool, not just like, hey, I read the article in a newsletter and now I know everything. I was like, no, you don't. Try it and see if it actually will perform is in the right way that you want it to perform. And if it doesn't really do this, please try again in a month later. Because what we saw in many examples, especially in development tools, when we tested the tool, it performed terribly. And like, we forgot about it for six months. And I'm eating another friend of mine is like, hey, and like, you know, we're using all these tools. Like, yeah, we tested half a year ago. It was terrible. Like, yeah, but like five months uh, ago, they launch a new thing and it's now performing amazing and we do X, Y, and Z. It's like, whoa. And like, literally this would translate in a hundreds of saved hours uh, uh, every month. And I was like, amazed. And like, why they didn't email us about this? Like, yeah, you... And like they they didn't contact us, etc. But like, uh, we just like lost this feature update. Oh, thought that this is irrelevant. And and again, like again, not every time it will be amazing, etc. Uh, but I think uh, dedicating uh, some hours per week for some tests like this, I think this is the key. And even for uh, old. No, things that doesn't, doesn't really work. If they uh, make some updates, I think it's uh, worthwhile uh, testing those. Yeah, thank you very much for that. That's that's highly valuable to understand. So thank you very much, Vadim. It has been a very interesting podcast, very nice. And thank you very much for your insights. Thanks for inviting. 